This is lesson 3.4, direct variation. Your objectives are to write and graph direct variation equations and to solve problems involving direct variation. A direct variation equation is described by an equation of the form y equals k times x, where k is not zero. So remember the formula y equals kx. We say that y varies directly as x. So k is the constant of variation. There are different types of questions you will solve with this. Some just asking about direct variation and then some will be graphing. Name the constant of variation for each equation and then determine the slope of the line that passes through each pair of points. This is an example of a direct variation graph. Notice that the y-intercept is zero. Direct variation graphs always go through the origin. And then it will have some slope. Well, to start, the constant of variation is negative 2 because the equation says y equals negative 2 times x. So k is negative 2. Now let's find the slope of the line. Use the slope formula. Take your pick which point you want to be the first point and which you want to be the second. If we use 0, 0 as the second point, y2 is 0 minus y1 is 2 over x2 is 0 minus x1 is negative 1. When you work that out, m equals negative 2, which is the same thing that k was. The slope of a direct variation equation will always be the same as k. Number two, this is the graph of the direct variation equation y equals 3x. k is the number in front of x, and in this one, k is 3. Now to find the slope, use the slope formula. m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If 1 comma 3 is the second point, then y2 is 3 minus y1 is 0 over x2 is 1 minus x1 is 0. Simplify that and m equals 3. The slope will always be the same as k. So whatever k is, that's the constant of variation, and it's the slope. Number three, here's another graph of a direct variation equation, y equals 3 halves x. Notice again, a direct variation equation goes through the origin because it has a y-intercept of zero. They will always go through zero, zero. This is in the form y equals kx. And in this case, k is three halves. To find the slope, use your slope formula. If 0, 0 is the second point, then y2 is 0 minus y1 is negative 3 over x2, which is 0, minus x1, which is negative 2. Simplify that, and m equals 3 halves. The slope is always the same. as k. y equals 3 halves x, so k is 3 halves, and the slope is 3 halves.
Suppose y varies directly as x. Write a direct variation equation that relates x to y and then solve. When you're working out questions like this, just remember to find k first. Once you find k, use that k to answer the question. Number four. If y equals four when x equals two, find y when x equals 16. Well, this is direct variation, so we'll use the equation y equals kx. Start with the first half of the question. If y equals 4 when x equals 2, well, substitute in. y is 4 and x is 2. Solve for k. Divide both sides by 2. So k is 2. Now use that k to answer the other question. Find y when x is 16. So, it's still y equals kx. I'm looking for y. k, I've already found it, it's 2. And x equals 16. So y is 32 when x equals 16. Find k first, and then use that k to answer the other question. Number 6. If y equals negative 4.8 when x equals negative 1.6, find x when y equals negative 24. Well, this is direct variation, so use y equals k times x. And then look at the first half of the question. If y equals negative 4.8 when x equals negative 1.6, we'll substitute in negative 4.8 for y and negative 1.6 for x, and solve for k. Divide both sides by negative 1.6, and k is 3. That's the constant of variation. So no matter what x and y are in this particular question, k will always be 3. It's constant. It doesn't change. Now look at the second half of the question. Find x when y equals negative 24. We'll use y equals kx again. y is negative 24. k is the 3 that we just found times x. And solve for x. Divide both sides by 3. And x is negative 8. Use the first half of the question to find k, and then use that k to answer the second half of the question. Number seven. If y equals one-fourth when x equals one-eighth, find x when y equals three-sixteenths. Well, this is direct variation, so y equals kx. Use the first half of the question and find k. Substitute one-fourth for y and one-eighth for x, and we'll solve for k. Since that's k times one-eighth, we'll need to divide both sides by one-eighth. And when you divide by a fraction, you're really multiplying by the reciprocal. So multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of one-eighth, which is eight. On the left, 8 times 1 fourth, if you need to put it over 1, that gives you 8 fourths, which is 2. And on the right, 1 eighth times 8 is just 1, and 1 times k is k. So k is 2. Now answer the second part of the question. Find x when y equals 3 sixteenths. Well, y is 3 sixteenths, k is 2, solve for x. That's 2 times x, so divide both sides by 2. And when you're dividing by 2, you're really multiplying by 1 half. So it'd be easier on this one, since I have a fraction, to multiply by 1 half. Multiplying those fractions 
gives you 3 over 32, and that's x. Find k first, and then use that k to answer the second part of the question. Sometimes you can solve word problems with direct variation. These come in the form of one variable equaling another variable times a third variable. Just like y equals kx, it's one variable equals the product of two other variables. The distance formula works like this. d equals rt. It's a direct variation equation. In the formula, distance varies directly as time, and the rate is the constant of variation. There are lots of other real-life formulas that we use that are direct variation. So whenever you have a word problem, be prepared that sometimes they will work just the same as direct variation. Consider this question. Number one, the total cost C of bulk jelly beans is $4.49 times the number of pounds P. Write a direct variation equation that relates the variables. Well, this is definitely direct variation. It's in the form y equals kx. y is going to be the total amount. And in this case, the total amount is the cost C. Notice the wording of the question, C is. C is the total variable C, and is is equals. That allows you to start the equation like this. Then you have $4.49 times, times what? Times the number of pounds P. And there you have it. Just like y equals kx, c equals 4.49p. Part b, graph the equation on the grid. Well, any direct variation equation starts at 0, 0, so I know we can put a point there. And then if you remember, the constant is just the same as the slope. In this one, the constant is $4.49. And since the slope is rise over run, we can put that over a 1, making it a fraction. And then remember that that will act like rise over run. So in the graph, I'll go up 4.49, which is about 4.5 and then I'll run one to the right, up four and a half over one, up four and a half over one, up four and a half over one. Get you a few points and then draw the line. It goes through the origin and then it uses the slope which is the same as the constant of variation. In this case 4.49 which you can put over one to rise over run. Part C, find the cost of three quarters of a pound of jelly beans. Well, use the formula. C equals 4.49P, and P is the pounds of jelly beans, so substitute three quarters in for P. And now solve for the total cost. So three quarters of a pound of jelly beans cost approximately $3.37. Use your formula, substitute in what you know, and solve for what you don't. Number two, in chemistry, Charles's law states that at a constant pressure, volume of a gas varies directly as its temperature T. A volume of 4 cubic feet of a certain gas has a temperature of 200 degrees Kelvin. A. Write a direct variation equation that relates the variables. Well, it's direct variation, so y equals kx. That happens when y varies directly as x. 
Well, let's apply these new variables to that equation. Since v varies directly, then we will have v equals. What does it vary directly as? It varies directly as the temperature T. So it'll be K times T. Now, let's find out what K is. A volume of four cubic feet, so substitute four for V, of a certain gas has a temperature of 200 degrees Kelvin. So substitute 200 for T and we'll solve for K. Divide both sides by 200. So K is 1 50th. To rewrite your equation, V equals K is now 1 50th times T. So find K and then rewrite your formula using that value of K. B. Graph the equation. Well, to start the graph, since it's direct variation, we know that it goes through the origin. So I have a y-intercept at zero. Now let's use K as the slope. K is 1 50th. So the slope is 1 50th and we can rise over run to put some more points on this graph. We'll rise 1, run 50. So from the origin, rise 1, run 50, put a point. Rise 1, run 50, put a point. Rise 1, run 50. And keep doing that. Get a few points, connect the dots, and there's your graph. Remember, direct variation goes through the origin, so start there, and then use your slope to rise over run to the next point. Connect the dots. C. Find the volume of the same gas at 250 degrees Kelvin. Well, use the same formula, V equals 1 50th T, except this time, since we know T, substitute that in. T is 250. Work that out, and V is 5, and the units for volume here are cubic feet, so this will be feet cubed. Use your formula, substitute in the value they give you, and solve for what they don't give you. So remember, these are all direct variations y varies directly as x, y equals kx, and k is the constant. When one number equals some number times a third thing, that's direct variation. Just like your total cost equals $5 times the number of shirts you buy. If movies cost $20 each, your total cost equals $20 times the number of movies you buy. It can be as simple as the amount of things you buy in a store to even more complicated things like this chemistry question dealing with volume and temperature. If it can be written in the form y equals kx, then it's direct variation. The graphs go through the y-intercept at zero, and then k is the slope, so you can rise over run to any other point on the line.